University, or in our case, the SIU Arena. It's a packed house. They've been waiting for this for a while. You can see the fans getting in line. They've been here a while, and if you thought the ESPN Bracket Buster game against Hawaii was something, you ain't seen nothing yet. Good evening from the SIU Arena. I'm Rick Gregg. Brandon Moore is alongside this game, SIU versus Creighton, a major rivalry in the Missouri Valley Conference, but it wasn't supposed to mean anything this year. Southern was picked fifth in the Missouri Valley Conference preseason rankings. In resources at SIU Carbondale in conjunction with WSIU TV and Saluki Athletics is conducting a test of its streaming media capabilities. To watch the game on your computer, go to www.siuc.edu. The game is best viewed if you have a 56 or faster connection, and you will need the real player software. It's in real one format. If the test is successful, it could lead the way to pay-per-view opportunities next season. But for now, it's free. Go to the web, and you can find tonight's game at www.siuc.edu. I'm Rick Gregg. Brandon Moore is next to me. Brandon Thompson, who I tried to call Brandon Moore in the open, will join us soon. We've got a sold-out crowd. We've got excited players. We've got a game about ready to start. The referees are Eddie Jackson, David Hall, and Randy McCall. And we are ready to go between Creighton and the 16th-ranked Salukis. Brody Darren jumps against Sylvester Willis for SIU, and the tip is won by Creighton. And they're going to come up the basketball court. And they're right, right there. We saw Hairston knock the ball away from Funk, and that's going to be the kind of pressure defense Southern plays all night. In the corner, it's Lindemann. He brings around course. He's trailing Brooks, and it's back out to the top. Grimes drives, kicks it out to Funk. Funk drives in, and he's going to put it over a flying Sylvester Willis. And quickly, it's 2-0 Creighton. Yeah, you can see Funk looking for his offense early on in the last game against the Dogs. Funk had a terrible game. So he comes out and puts that early two on the board. Dogs got to watch out for him. We've made a lot now. A quick three by Korn from the top of the key. And train it. Brad Korn, he's a 33% three-point shooter. That means he'll hit one of three, and that was his one. Brad Korn from the top of the key. Pretty shot there. Darren tried to hit a cutting Grimes for Creighton, but he was fouled, so that won't count. Stetson Harrison picks up that first foul. You know, we make a lot of SIU's defense, and we'll see it once Southern gets the ball back. Creighton will press almost the entire court as well. Yeah, but with the, dog, with the dog's guard lineup, they're, they're, they're suited for uh, the pressure that uh, Creighton puts on them. Drive by Mathis. Now he pulls up, tries to get it inside. It's knocked away and comes away with it as Brian Turner. He's going to push it up the court. The ball deflected off of Sylvester Willis. Yeah. You, guys, you guys mark that there. That's the first steal for the Dogs. Maybe the first of a lot this evening. It could be. They set a record against Hawaii. Inside the Darren Brooks up and in. Good court vision there by Brian Turner to get him the ball. Yeah. Brian Turner could pass there. DB with the easy lay-in. And it's 5-2 to two SIU. Early on, 18-38 to play in the first half. Brody Darren pivoting against Willis up and over. Brody and Brody Darren. Darren has just been a Saluki killer in his time at Creighton. He has scored a numerous points against SIU. And I remember the Missouri Valley Tournament was important. Corn, three, no. And the rebound comes away to Brian Turner. Turner across to Brooks again. This time he dumps it off to Willis, who goes up and dominates inside. Yeah. Sweet pass there by DB. Finding the easy look for his big man down low, Sly Willis. Sly Willis likes those easy hoops. That'll get him going early on. 7-4 SIU. Mathis almost loses control. Gets it off to Michael Lindemann. Now back to Grimes at the top and over to Funk. Funk guarded by Brian Turner. SIU will try and get hands on the ball as much as it can. Funk around the outside. Turner giving him fits. Now to Grimes at the top. He'll pick it back to Funk. 12 on the shot clock. And now we have a foul inside on Brad Korn. And one thing Southern can't afford. Or actually, they're going to call the foul on Sylvester Willis. Either way, it was a foul inside. And if SIU has a weak point, it's the inside players uh, for the Salukis. Yeah. yeah. Early foul there on Sly Willis, but he's just battling for position. I, I think Painter can live with that. He'll have him down low. He wants him to fight for position down there. Can't give up space to big Brody Darren you down there Jamal, on the block. You saw Jamal Tatum check into the game. Matt Painter likes to go to Tatum and some of his other bench players three minutes in a little early on Tatum. He gives him a lot of energy off the bench. Funk at the top of the key. He's going to run point now for Creighton. Over to Lindemann. <laughs> Brooks with a hand right in Lindemann's face. Almost mugged him right there. Darren backs in on Korn, puts it up and in. Uh, Brody Darren down there on the block. Just too much for Korn. Just too much of a uh, weight difference there for Korn, but easy basket for Brody Darren. Four points for uh, Brody Darren, and you're right. Brad Korn is a tall but very thin uh, player for SIU. 
Inside to Willis, he tries to penetrate. Jump stop up and no good. Rebounded by Corn. Up and no good, and the rebound tipped away. It's going to be controlled by Creighton. Yeah. Miller got missed. the rebound. He's into the ball game now for the Blue Jays. Trapped in the corner by Tatum. Now he finds Mike Grimes, a friendly blue shirt. The dog pound is loud. Ball almost knocked away. It is knocked away by Jamal Tatum into the hands of Brad Corner. Loses it into Willis, and now back up across. SIU forced another turnover. Yeah, that's still number two right there, Rick. <laughs> We're going to count them all game. <laughs> Brooks across to Hairston. He pulls up a long NBA-style three. Misses it. Rebounded by Lindemann, who had good position on Darren Brooks. And Creighton has the ball back. Mass substitutions at the bench next time they're available. Three for SIU. Funk brings it across to Grimes. And Brody Darren now a jump shot. Why not? He's hot and he misses it. And it's rebounded by Jamal Tatum. Tatum brings it up. He was the only one underneath the basket. Yeah, I think the dogs will live with Brody Darren shooting that side jump shot. They won't live with Lindemann knocking the ball away from Tatum. Now a fast break for Creighton. Miller almost run over one of the referees. And it's back to Funk at the top. Down low to Darren. Another foul. And that's going to be on Willis. And all of a sudden, four minutes in, Sylvester Willis is going to have to sit for most of the rest of this first half. Yeah, he's going to have to take a seat there. But uh, as, I, as I mentioned in our last broadcast against Evansville, if it's one strength that the dogs have, it's their, it's their bench. Josh Warren's played some great minutes in the last couple games against Evansville and Hawaii. So you look for him to come in and battle Brody Darren down there on the block. Jimmy Motes and Quincy Henderson in, but it's Nate Funk driving the lane and putting a nice uh, layup right in there. Yeah, Funk, as I said, he last game against SIU, he had, a, he had a terrible performance, really was shut down. So you can see him looking for his offense early on, getting to the basket on his first two attempts. Funk with four, Darren with four, Creighton with eight, and an 8-7 lead. Tony Young was into the ball game in that last change. He's got the ball now along with Josh Warren and Lamar Owen. Three from the corner, thought about by Brooks. Now he pulls up, now inside the Josh Warren back, wide open corner. Tony Young drains it. Spark plug off the bench. It unites him with his defense, but he also can hit that open three over there in the corner and all over the court. Tony Young had six steals in the bracket buster against Hawaii. The ball's knocked out of bounds, and they're going to say it's off of Milliner. And we've come to our first official timeout. 16th ranked Southern 10, eight points for Creighton University. We'll be back. Support for this program comes from Gentry Couch Incorporated, business insurance and risk management specialists serving the region from their offices in Carterville, Illinois, 1-800-455-4886. Support for this program comes from Mark Williams Outdoor Equipment, sales and service with name brands like Echo, Mantis. And no good. And knocked out of bounds. They're going to say it's off Creighton. Yeah. Check into the game for the dogs. Spark plug Lamar Owen in the game. And Lamar Owen brought down the house against Hawaii in the bracket buster with a thunderous dunk late in the game, which you might have seen on Sports Center. Jamal Tatum having trouble getting it in and barely does before the five seconds are up. Brooks has it at the top. 10 8 SIU leading Creighton. Glad you're with us. 15 minutes to play in the opening period of the ball game. Yeah, if you check out the Creighton defense here, they're switching up. They came out in the zone at first, and then they switched up, went into a man on the dogs. Kind of Darren Brooks, the dogs there. Darren Brooks missed that three. Uh, Creighton with the rebound and up across. And the Blue Jays can run with SIU. Maybe the only team in the Valley that does have that speed, unless you count Wichita State. On the other hand, SIU can run with Creighton. Inside now, Joe Dabbert in the game. He gets the hook shot up over Warren. And Warren comes away with the rebound, and they'll call a jump off. Warren did not have full possession, but you can see early what Creighton's trying to do. They're going to try and get the ball inside every time to either Dabbert or to Darren, and they're going to try and victimize Brad Korn and Josh Warren because Sylvester Willis has already been victimized. Two fouls. Yeah, you, you, can't, you can't fault Warren on that play. He's down low. He's playing hard, and he goes up, and it kind of looked like he was over the back there, but uh, the uh, possession arrow goes to the dogs. Darren Brooks barely gets it into Josh Warren who passes it back to him, and Brooks will bring it up. Brooks leads the MVC in scoring. And he leads Southern in three other categories. Nobody's ever led SIU in more than three categories. Brooks with a run into the basket. Sweet play by Brooks. Right on key for you there, Rick. As soon as you speak about DV, he goes and puts the hoop in for well, you. Well, you know what the amazing thing is? He'll get those points quietly. He averages 16.7 a game, but you won't hear about many of them. Those were two you will. Inside again to Dabbert. Double team now, and they kick it outside. A driving Johnny Mathis stops back to Milner. And he pulls up from three range and misses a shot. Rebounded by Henderson. Henderson takes it away, stolen away by Owen, but right into the hands of Mathis. And Mathis will try and drive on Tony Young. Inside to Dabber, he goes up and is fouled. Lamar Owen has a de definite height disadvantage. Joe Dabbert, six foot 11. He's a tall one. 
And Lamar, what is it? Yeah. But <laughs> that one. Owen, Owen will let you know down there. He's letting them know, hey, there's no easy baskets on me. You may be bigger, you may be stronger, but you got to go up tough with it if you're going to put it up on him. That's, That's how you proud of him. That looks like a little bit of a statement foul there yeah. by me. A little bit. <laughs> Don't want to challenge too low is what it is. It, just because he's shorter at 6'5 doesn't mean he can be abused. Dabbert hits the first free throw. The problem with a statement foul like that is you've already got four on the team now, and Creighton is not committed to foul yet, and three of those four have come inside. Yeah. Misses the second free throw. Hairston pulls away the rebound. A little scrum underneath beforehand. Tatum trying to run point. He's guarded tenaciously by Milliner. Young with it on the elbow. Inside to Josh Warren. Warren drives against Dabbert. Now the baby hook up and in. A great basket there by Josh Warren. He comes back. If they're going to come at him inside, he has to take it right back at them on the inside. And that's a nice little baby hook, which is his patent, patented shot down there on the block. Mathis faked out Tony Young, but Stetson Harrison got a ball on it. Mathis lost it. It's off great. And the Smokies will have it underneath, leading 14 to 9. Hey, Rick, that's another turnover. For the that's another turnover. <laughs> yes, it is. Well, you know, Josh Warren, we saw in that last play, he doesn't have many moves. He does not, but. One of the moves Josh Warren has, and he'll use it to effectiveness, is that little baby hook. And he's got it with both hands there, Rick, so he's effective with it. You know, you got to go for what works with you. Yes, you definitely do. Tatum gets it over the line before 10 seconds are up. And now he gets a screen from Warren, pulls up a three and drains it. Ja uh, Jamal Tatum is cool as can be. You'd never know the kid was a freshman. If it didn't say so in the program, man, if he wasn't listed at six foot one. Yeah, what more can you say about Jamal? He, he, he comes in and gives instant offense and instant defense for Coach Painter every time off the bench. And I saw you had a player a couple of years ago, Tyrese Bowie, who was instant offense. But you're right, he's instant energy. You know, he's not decaf. Backing <laughs> down to, uh, Brody Darren on Warren, puts it up in a tough shot. He missed it, rebounded and tipped up and no good. And out of bounds, they're going to say it's off. Josh Warren. Yeah. Nice inside play by Creighton that time. Yeah, you can see Brody Darren saying, I'm going to use you guys in here. I'm going to use my size and my strength. So he's trying to go up and get his points early. And Sly you see, Willis back in the ball game. He has two fouls already tonight. Yeah, Painter counteracts with Sly. He feels like this is the guy who has to guard Darren this evening. Well, Sly Willis is a, is a senior. And you think that your seniors can play without committing fouls. And so far, Creighton's shown that. They started three seniors and two sophomores. And the Blue Jays have not picked up a foul yet. Darren on the perimeter gets it up to Mathis at the top of the key. Twelve and a half minutes to play in the first half. SIU 17, Creighton 9. Southern a little fresher than it was against Hawaii at 11 p.m. Hand off to Milliner. And, sorry, Mathis. And he is trapped by Tug. Jamal Tatum, what a play by defense. On defense by Tatum. Now it's Milliner. He drives with the ball, knocks it off with Grimes, and it's out of bounds. <laughs> Hate to say it again, Craig, but that's another turnover. The Salukis have suffocating defense. SIU so far has forced four turnovers on the Creighton Blue Jays. Your counting is good. Committed only one against Hawaii, and in, in its last game, Southern committed way too many turnovers, but SIU comes into this game uh, ranked in the top ten in the country in fewest turnovers allowed. Yeah, SIU, that's, that's, that's where they start. Defense is what starts for the dogs. The, golf, the dogs begin on defense, and it ignites their offense. Jamal Tatum at the top of the key, guarded by Mathis. Creighton still in the matchup, man-to-man. -man. Inside to Korn, who takes it up and uh, foul. That's the first foul of the game. It's by Darren. First foul for Creighton, I should say. I don't know what Lindemann for. I, I like to see Korn down there on the inside, kind of mixing it up every now and then. You know, he gets so used to hitting the outside jumpers. Check the replay out here. As Brad Corns at the line, ready to shoot it. And the first one's up and in. Here we see him drive to the lane. It is Lindemann right there from my angle. It looked like Darren, but Darren wasn't anywhere near him. Yeah. Lindemann was moving. Yeah, like I was saying, I like to see DK mix it up on the inside for the dogs. Kind of use his height, get some baskets in there, you know, mix it up, get, get some fouls in contact to get to the free throw line. You know he's good from the free throw line. Brad Corn hits the first, misses the second. Brody Darren comes away with the board. <laughs> and there Eight. goes the free throw jinx. Sorry to mix it up. <laughs> 18-9 SIU on top of Creighton. And Darren with the top ball at the top of the key. Lindemann sat out for a while. He is back in the ballgame, picked up that first foul. Inside, up and down by Mike Grimes. His first points. Grimes averages 9.3 a ball game. Trapped was Turner. He yeah, 
That's an over the back foul there on Grimes. Slide Willis going up for the rebound. Support for this program comes from SI Family Dentistry and Dr. Douglas J. Baker, DDS, Cosmetic and General Dentistry. Dental care for adults and children, 108 North 14th Street in Murfreesboro, 684-6461. SIU goes with them. We want to share every exciting moment. We need your support to make it happen. Call now 1 800 745 9748. 1 800 745 9748 is the phone number. You can call to help play. Support for tonight's program comes from the SIU Alumni Association. We'll be hosting a hospitality suite before and after the SIU games at the Marriott Pavilion during the Missouri Valley Conference Tournament. Our speaker is 453. We're supposed to talk about uh, how you can get on the internet and watch tonight's game, but uh, there's a bit of a problem with that. Uh, there are 96 people. All right, we're coming back to action here. Dogs check the ball in. 18 to 11, the dogs are up. 11 minutes and 13 seconds left in the first half. Stetson has the ball up top. Pressured over in the corner by Funk. Passes it back up to BT, top of the key. Stetson brings it around top. Got it. And now we've got the handheld Over. mic and we're back in action. A little bit of audio problems. But the ball is knocked away by Creighton and here we come the other direction. Uh, yeah. Funk pushing it up the court and he'll miss the rebound. This is the layup. Kind of kind of ticky tech there. Looked like on the ref. Looked like the same steal that the Blue Jays got on Sly there. Looked like the same thing that happened to Funk, but foul goes to Foul on the dogs there, and Funk will go to the line to uh, try to push his total up for the evening. He's got four early on. We apologize for the technical difficulties with my sound. I am here. And Nate Funk is here, too. He makes the first free throw. Yeah, Funk is averaging 11 points on the season for the Blue Jays. He's got five already halfway to his average, so you can see he's coming out really aggressive, looking to be assertive on the offensive end against the dogs this evening. Second free throw up and in, and it's now 18 to 13. SIU with the lead. The 16th ranked Salukis having a better go of it tonight than they did against Hawaii earlier this week. Brad Corn with the ball now, and he gets it over to Darren Brooks. And you can see that the Creighton Blue Jays have moved back into their zone. Rebounded by Brooks, and so he makes up for the missed three by Turner. Turner's shot's been broken lately. He's been trying, but they haven't been falling for the point guard from St. Louis. Now a cutter to nobody. Brooks thought Willis was going to cut to the lane, and he did not. Yeah, the, you can see that the Blue Jays are switching up their defenses. They switch up to a zone on this possession, kind of rattle the dogs there. DB throws an errant pass right into the section of the SIU arena. 10-16 to play. Creighton with the basketball. Fake by Funk drives and back out to the top. Darren penetrating. Rebound it is. I'm sorry, the shot is up and no good, and it's rebounded by... That's in Hairston. Hairston drives the lane, dishes it off to Willis, and it's stolen away. They're going up and down the court right now. Funk away, drive, and over Corn. Yeah, nice finish there. Nice, nice finish there by Johnny Matthews. Johnny Matthews got that one, and it is now 18 to 15. Creighton a little run. Now Corn from long range, no good, and it's rebounded by SIU. And Southern needs to hold on to itself right now. Hairston drives, kicks it back out. Three from Turner. Book it. Shot. Like you said, BT hasn't really been shooting that well, but one thing he does not bash away from his shot, he still puts him up, and that's a great shot there from the corner. Now a pass knocked away by Corn, and SIU gets it back, and it's 21 to 15. Mark it again for me, Rick. Yeah. That's still number five. We're taking the tally marks down here. Josh Warren ready to check in, so is Joe Dabbert. And Dana Altman is going to send Kellen Milliner in too soon. Yeah, speaking of steals there, Rick. The Salukis broke a record the other night with 21 steals against Hawaii. It set a school, tied a school record, actually. Stetson's over in the corner, passes up to BT at the top. DB, slash and move to the hoop. Boy, the things that Darren Brooks can do, he's got six, and SIU leads it again by eight. Batted back that little Creighton run to the Salukis. The Blue Jays with it now, and here's Tolliver into the game for the first time. Anthony Tolliver for Creighton. 
Yeah, at the next dead ball, you've got subs coming in for both squads. For the Salukis, you've got Young, Tatum, Owen, and Warren checking in. And for the Blue Jays, got two players checking in. I'm just going to stop mentioning that. That's another steal there for the dogs. <laughs> <laughs> Missed two there, but great aggressive play. Great, great hustle there by Sly. He couldn't put it in, but you, but you see the efforts there. He's trying to get it in. Coach Painter, you can see him on the sideline. He gives him five. Say, hey, great effort there, bud. Clock 23 to 15. SIU leads Creighton. Yeah. Owen Cutter up. No good. Rebounded. Owen jumps up for it. He gets his own rebound again and puts it up and no good. Wow, the crowd is getting ready here at the SIU Arena. Down under the basket, that's Mr. Soccer with the, with the repeated rebounds down there, just tipping it to itself, Lamar Owen. Salukie fans want goaltending, they're not getting it. Owen's ready to shoot two, he hits the first one. That puts the dogs up 24 to 15 with eight minutes to play in the first half here at SIU Arena. Owen's second shot up and... It's a move. Owen, Brooks, Warren, Tatum, and Tony Young in the game for SIU. And now here's a drive and back out is Grimes to the corner. And Johnny Mathis has it guarded by Young. Mathis, Grimes, Dabber, Lindemann, and Kellen. Yeah, that's, that's a sweet shot there by Dabber from the from the elbow there, elbow jump shot, nice shot for the big man. Nate Funk and uh, Brody Daring each had four points early in this game and neither one has scored. And now we've got a foul on the trap of Darren Brooks. Mathis and Dabber combined to trap Brooks and we've got an official timeout. 25 to 17 to score, seven and a half minutes to play. The number 16 ranked Saluki is in command early. Back in so, I think our kids got a good frame of mind and we're just gonna try to build on last year's success. All right, Coach, thanks for your time. Go ahead and enjoy the game. Guys, back down to you. Well, he should enjoy the game. We've got a good one. 25-17 is the score, but the game sure felt a little bit closer than that. Yeah, a little bit of a football play there. <laughs> Dabbert and Tatum go at each other <laughs> on a tackle, going for the loose ball. First down, Saluki. I mean, possession, Salukis. Young with the ball and over to Tatum at the top. 7-15 to play. 25-17 is the score here from the SIU Arena. Josh Warren has it alone up top. Now he gives it to Owen, who pulls up and hits it. Yeah, great shot there by Owen. And he slides right in the spot where you have to hit the zone. He gets in that soft spot and hits that nice free throw line jumper. Good shot by Owen. Foul at midcourt. Called on Tony Young. He had six steals against Hawaii, as we've mentioned, but uh, he didn't have many fouls, and that time he did. Young has had a uh, propensity to foul out of the game in Southern's game so far because of his aggressive defense. Yeah, and I think that's something that Coach Painter can live with because Tony Young really sets the tone for the bench when he comes in on defense. Mathis with the ball at the top. Now he drives and he stopped. And they're calling a walk on Mathis before he could even get to Lamar Owen. Owen was standing there waiting for him to come, waiting to get run over. But before he could get there, Mellon was called for the travel. Yeah, that, that play right there seemed like kind of like a multiple choice for the referee. Seemed like he could have called the travel, the block, or the charge. You know, so he went ahead and went with the travel. <laughs> SIU ball. It's a Scantron test at the SIU arena. Brooks has it, and he pushed it up court along with Tatum. Now Tatum really pushing. Tatum is fast. He's a dead-eye shooter for SIU. Here's Owen in the corner. Yeah, the Blue Jays remain in the zone. Again, look for the dogs to attack the middle of the zone, the free throw area and down low on the blocks. Those are the soft spots of the zone. Lamar Owen, jumper, good. And when you leave him open, he's got a very unorthodox shooting style, but really it doesn't matter if the ball falls down, and Dana Altman needs a timeout. Yeah, Lamar Owen just named to the all-bench team along with his bench teammate, Jamal Tatum. So they're putting those numbers to work for Coach Painter early on. Dog 29, Creighton 17. Well, Owen and Tatum have been a big surprise for SIU. The reason they were picked fifth in the conference 
uh, basically because nobody knew what Owen and Tatum would be able to do. And here's the jumper from above the top of that key. And it's, it's, it, it looks good if you don't pay attention to his hands. If you just watch the ball, it looks fine. Then he shoots the ball with you watch his hands, and it's like, my gosh, look at that. <laughs> there it goes again. I'm not sure if that's the one before or the one after, but they both look the same and both the same result. Well, I'm, there I'm sure it's been mentioned before, but Owen was a Mr. Soccer in the state of Kentucky. He provides all of that energy, and I don't know if he can head the ball into the basket, but I'm sure he'd try given the opportunity. He still loves to play. Funk brings it up court for Creighton. 29-17, Saluki's by 12. This game nothing like so far the last contest at Creighton, the 61-60 final that SIU won. Yeah. Ball knocked away and comes into the hands of Tony Young. He's pushing two on four. Creighton is back, and now the ball's knocked out of Young's hands. Saved once, twice, and into the hands of Owen, who goes up, tries to dunk it, and he's fouled. Well, he tried to bring the house down with a dunk again, and uh, that time no one's going to let him do it, and Michael yeah. Lindemann is hurt. Yeah, you could tell what was on Owen's mind. Here goes the replay, straight to the hoop. Owen oh. went right up, and in the process, Michael Lindemann went up to foul him, too, kind of got hit. Lindemann was on his knees for a moment, but it looks like he will stay in the ballgame. Yeah, and Joe Dabbert at 6'11", 255. He's not easy to go through there, Lamar. Lamar found that out, but, you know, nevertheless, he tried to attempt and he takes himself to the line for two more shots. Well, Dana Altman, Creighton's coach, who's over getting a glass of water right now, is 194 and 105 in his career as a Creighton's head coach. This is his 300th career game. There you see, Mr. Altman. 300 career games. If his Blue Jays can win tonight, he'll catch Rich Heron as Owen's first free throws up there. He'll catch former longtime SIU coach Rich Heron for third place on the Missouri Valley Conference. I'm sorry, he'll pass him. He's already tied with him. He'll pass him for third place on the conference's all-time win list with 111 career Missouri Valley Conference wins. Yeah. Owen's second shot is good. That's six quick points there for Lamar Owen. Definitely a spark for Coach Painter off the bench. Tony Owen. Young heads to the bench. Sorry about that. And uh, Brad Quinn checks in for the dogs. Owen has eight for Southern. He's the leading scorer for the Salukis. And it seems like Creighton has kind of got away from what got their baskets for him early. Early on, they were going inside to Grimes, Dabbert. And, and it seems like they've gotten away from that a little bit. So I look for them to try to get it back inside and uh, reassert themselves on the inside against the dogs. In trouble, pass out to Henderson, and Henderson pushes off Tatum, and Tatum's going to be called for the foul for backing into him. Tatum got turned around by the pass, and he uh, ran right into Henderson when he was going backwards. I'm not sure how long it's been, Rick, but the Blue Jays have been scoring for a few minutes here. They have been solo on the shots. Now here you see him drive, and Tatum was fooled by the pass, and then he was fooled by the fake. Yeah, so Henderson to the line. Henderson, a 6'5 freshman out of Madison, Wisconsin, Makes the first free throw. Creighton is in the bonus. Yeah, and with that shot, Peterson hits his, hits his average for the season. So <laughs> anything from this point on is a plus for Coach Dana Altman. He's ready at the line. And it's in. Go. Henderson Positive gets some numbers. 31-18, SIU with the lead early. Lamar Owen has the ball, and he gets it over to Tatum. Yeah. And Blue Jays go and turn it into a press against the dogs, but the dogs break it. Stetson takes it up top. Driving is Harrison. He kicks it out. Corn open. Three. No. Rebounded by Darren. And Southern only getting one shot. A lot of time trips down the court. Then it's balanced by a shot. Well, the uh, Temple, they'll get three shots. For example, Owen's first basket. Tipped up, tipped up, tipped up, and in. Well, Creighton doing a good job controlling the rebounding so far in this game, and it's a hype thing. Henderson has it at the elbow, gets it over to Milliner. Three ball is blocked by Owen. Lamar Owen got a long arm in front of that ball, and Salukis are going to run. Three on three, now three on four. Tatum takes it to the hole. Anyway, it's no good, but they're going to call a foul on Creighton. So to the line will go Jamal Tatum. The foul's on Quincy Henderson. Yeah, the two guys from the all-bench team for Coach Painter. Lamar Owen with the block on the shot. Tatum with the push. Takes it straight to the hoop. Gets Look at that going up with the by, left. Look at that layup by Tatum. Tatum is listed in the book of 6'1". I don't know about that. He may be 5'11", 6' foot tall. He's very short, but he's got a dead eye, as we said before, and he's not afraid of anything. Yeah, checking in, Sly Willis comes in for Josh Warren, and BB checks back in for the spark plug, Lamar Owen. Now, Josh Warren is 
a good person off the bench for SIU, but his problem is Lamar Owen gets a huge standing ovation from the crowd. They like his energy when Tatum hits the second. The problem with Josh Warren is he doesn't have very good conditioning, and he can't stay out there very long. And so he has, so Willis has to come in, even with those two fouls, or else Warren's going to be sucking wind behind the rest of the group. 33-19 SIU, four and a half to play in the first period. Slowly, first. slowly but surely, the dogs are kind of choking the life out of the Blue Jays. 33-19 here with the steal, Stetson. Yeah, Harrison with a steal on a shot, no good, and he's fouled. Someone's fouled underneath. Foul on the play. Foul's going to be called on Darren. I, I think that's foul. Brody's second. Yeah, I think that foul was on BK going over the back there. It was on Brad. Yes, it was. When they pointed, they pointed at one of the two, and I picked the wrong one. Yeah, that's all right. Corn just got uh, kind of out of position, ended up over the back of Brody Darren, sends him to the free throw line. Well, Corn has a foul. Owen has a foul. As we'll see down here, Brad yeah, coming from behind, and he'll hack from behind. Yeah, right on top of Darren's head. Darren shooting one and the bonus with four and a half to play in the first half. First shot up and in. Brody Darren with a good good shot there. Pushes his totals up for the evening. He's a season 60% free throw shooter you see there on your screen. Average is over 11 points a game. He's got five. And looking to make it six. And he does. Yeah, Brody Darren is leading the Blue Jays in scoring and in rebounding. And uh, his backcourt guy, Nate Funk, is right behind him at Willis trapped, game. gets it out to Korn, and that's how you gets it over the line. Now it's Brooks in the corner, and everybody's back. Brooks drives anyway, almost walks with the ball, has it knocked away. It's grabbed by Funk, and he barely stayed in bounds. That could have been turno two turnovers, one on each team. And now Creighton the other direction. Milliner drives on Turner, gets it off to Darren down low. He turns around, he puts it up, it's missed, and Korn falls on the ball. And they're calling a jump ball. With three Creighton Blue Jays on the floor and one Saluki, and Brad Corn forced the jump ball. And Matt Painter's angry, but he'll have his chance to argue during the upcoming media timeout. 33 to 21 the score. SIU leads Creighton with four minutes to play in the first half. That's then we'd all be in trouble. WSIU is your home for Saluki basketball. We ask that you show your support by calling right now at the pledge. 1-800-745-9748. Lindemann with a quick shot. It's up, and the rebound knocked away by Darren over Warren. Tries to get it out to Funk. It's stolen by Harrison, and he's all alone for the jam. Another steal for the dogs, and an easy hoop for Stetson. That's what he needs, some easy hoops to get his offense going. But again, it started with defensive pressure for the dogs. 35. 35-21, Funk brings it back up the court. SIU by 14, and this is the kind of lead you just do not see often in Creighton SIU games, at least not during the regular season. I don't want to talk about that Missouri Valley Conference championship game last year where Creighton blew SIU out of the gym in the first half. Lindemann around the corner, guarded, stopped by Warren, and onto the top, and quicked up and dropped. No good, rebounded and knocked away to Brad Warren. Josh Warren, Brad Warren would be a combination of the two. I'll tell you what, if you take Brad Korn's shooting and Josh Warren's size, you got a good player. Kicked out to Warren, he'll shoot one and put it in. Pretty shot by, by Josh over there on the corner. Warren has four. Maybe he did take some of Brad's shooting. SIU's bench is standing. They're excited. Funk drives, kicks it away to Dabbert, who puts it up in an easy layup to Dabbert. And he's gotten a couple of those. He's got yeah. five points. But that basket there was created by Funk. Funk on the drive creates the easy basket for his big man down low. Good drive by Funk. SIU taking its time now, two and a half to play in the first. Harrison with the ball, Southern leading by 14 points. Just a slow bleed from the Salukis. Korn turns around, fires, no good. And it's tipped away and rebounded by Darren Brooks. And then the ball falls out of bounds. And coming away with it is Creighton. Milliner trying to push the Jays off to Lindemann. Darren Brooks got that rebound almost. And now back out to the top, no good. Lindemann gets the rebound, he was alone. Here's Funk for a three. No good, and it's rebounded by Dabbert. He pumps and puts it in. Yeah. Dabbert's Dabbert. a monster down low. Yeah, big Dabbert down low. Puts up the, gets the rebound, puts the easy deuce, and this is going down the court. He calls for his replacement. <laughs> Who's coming back in? Brody Darren. So the dogs don't get much of a break down low against the Blue Jays. It's a case of the lesser of two evils, and right now SIU would like anybody shorter than 6'8 to be in the game. Yeah. Josh Warren has it, looking to set up the rebound. On the other hand, the Salukis are winning by 12, so it hasn't thrown them off too much. Quick three by Brooks is no good, and rebounded by Funk. 
And now he's got an open Grimes at the end who stops, pops, and misses it. And it's rebounded by Milliner. He's holding, and he's hopping along the line, and they're going to call. But he stepped on the L in Illinois on the baseline. There goes the replay here. Stetson on the break. Easy deuce. Slams it in. Gets a good reaction from the SIU fans. Well, they love Stetson Harrison. He's the more flashy of the Harrison Brooks duo, but he's not the higher scorer. Yeah. There's a couple points for Harrison. He is the dunker, though. Brooks, you won't see dunk very often, if ever. In fact, the one time I remember in the Serena that he tried it earlier this year, he missed the dunk and got laughed at by his teammates afterward. Didn't matter, SIU was winning big at that time. Yeah, SIU's up 37-25 now. 121 left in the half. I look for the dogs to finish off the half strong. Don't let Creighton go on a run and cut this lead down. Finish off the half strong. You saw a glimpse of Matt Painter there. 22 and 2 as SIU's head coach and his first head coaching job anywhere. Follow Bruce Weber here from Purdue. Tony Young to the corner to Hairston and back to Young. Yeah, and Creighton stay, is staying in the 2 3 zone, kind of wanting to bait the dogs into shooting the three ball. Tatum pushing. He puts it up with six on the clock. It's no good, and Darren gets the rebound. Yeah, and the, and the bait works there for the Blue Jays. They get Jamal to end up pulling up for a, probably an ill advised three there, but the time is running down. Brody Darren has four rebounds for Creighton already in this game. Milliner with it over to Darren, and he hasn't played that much. Funk with the ball across to Darren. Drives, and he almost walked with the ball, and Warren gets the ball on the block. Yeah, great defensive stand there by Warren, pushed by Tony Young. Young decides to pull it back, and with 17 seconds left, Southern's going to play for one shot, 37-25. Tatum with the ball at the top. The SIU crowd gets into it. Young to Tatum. Harrison in the corner with seven left and drains it. Stetson Harrison hits the three. That is great execution by the dogs there. Gets the easy shot for Stetson. Like I said, when he gets those easy layups like he got on the last play, he got an easy one, that basket gets bigger for him. He hits the great three for Coach Painter to send him into the half. And dogs up 40-25. SIU with that 40-25 to lead. Brandon Thompson has SIU coach Matt Painter. Absolutely right. And coach, a 15-point lead more than you led all game last time at Creighton. Of course, Corver and company graduated last year. McKinney's hurt. And Creighton really struggling to find offense against this SIU press. Yeah, really a testament to the dogs' defense. Uh, in fact, over the weekend in the bracket buster, they held the Hawaii Rainbows to 0 for 8 from the three line for the entire game. So kind of the same trend going on here. Dogs just a great defensive team. The last three times these two have hooked up in regular season play, the team leading at halftime has lost the game. That does not bode well for SIU, although the 15-point cushion sure feels nice. Stetson Harrison has it to start the second half for 16th ranked SIU. Yeah. He hands yeah. it off to Brooks, who runs a screen from Corn, drives the lane, puts it up, and it falls. Hoop for DB, slashing to the basket. Darren Brooks now tied for the game lead with eight points. Really balanced scoring from both teams in the first half. Two players with six, one with seven for Creighton. Yeah, I don't know if there's a better in-between player in the NBC. BB just gets those easy ones on Brody the inside. Darren, uh, Brody Darren, excuse me, on the other end. Yeah, and as, as I say, the inside Rick, Brody Darren, yeah. the big guy on the inside for the Blue Jays, goes ahead and puts in two more of his. It's a matter of depth, and sometimes SIU's depth can wear you down. Two big men, Darren and uh, Dabbert, have done their share of do domination here in this game so far, but uh, SIU with a commanding 15-point lead. The guards have not gotten much for Creighton. Brooks loses the ball, and it's right into the hands of Lindemann. He kind of got trapped there and couldn't do anything with it. Ahead to Funk, he pulls up from just inside the line, and a weird rebound comes back up and in for Mike Grimes. A rebound there by Grimes. Again, the dogs want to watch the boards. I'm sure that was a bulletin board at halftime for Coach Painter. They can't give up the easy rebound. Mike Grimes had 23 rebounds in his last three games heading into this one. That was his first board of the night. Corn pushing inside. Now pulls up over Lindemann and falling and misses it, but there's a foul. I didn't hear a whistle. I just saw everybody stop. Yeah, so I didn't hear the whistle. It's one of those high-pitched dog whistles there, that only Rick. the Salukis can hear. That's, that's another note that I was making early in the game, Rick. I want to see BK get down there and mix it up. So there he goes again, and he gets himself to the charity stripe. It's not his job to play inside Brad Corn, but it really helps when he does. He misses the first free throw. It just kind of adds that versatility to his game. You know he can hit the jump shot, but at 6'8", 6'9", he's got the ability to put some hoops in under the basket. 
Here we'll see the, the rebound and the layup for Grimes. As I said, the first rebound for him in this game. He'd been hot of late for the Blue Jays. Into the game for Creighton. Kellen Milliner replaces Funk, and Corn hits the second. And it's a 14-point SIU lead. Yeah, so Corn hits the free throw, and he'll take a seat. And uh, his benchmate comes in, Lamar Owen. Matt Painter said it time and again. He really has eight, maybe nine starters if you count. And the way Tony's been playing lately, you have to count. Oh. Lindemann with the ball in the yelp. Uh, pressure up top. Lindemann comes around the corner. Grimes fouls oh. it up and puts it in. We'll see if they call. They do count the basket. Yeah, easy basket there by Grimes on the loose ball. He goes and just drops it in for the easy deuce. And he's going to go and look for the extra point at the free throw line. Replay here. Well, Grimes wasn't much of a force inside in the first half because he didn't. He needed to be, but could not do much. And that time, now two quick follow-up baskets for Mike Grimes. Yeah, well, I bet you his coach Dana Altman told him at halftime, "Look, buddy, you've got to get down there and put some points on the board for us. You're one of our key contributors." He hits his one free throw and cuts the SIU lead to 11. A little run by Creighton, picking up four points here. Yeah. One thing I don't want to see the dogs get complacent with this lead. I want to see them still continue to execute on offense, still do the things that they did to get this lead. I don't want to see them sit back because this game is far from over. It plagued Southern earlier in the year. And now Brooks, quick inside the th three-point line, no good. Owen tried to grab it on a follow-up dunk, but the ball went away from him, and Darren got the rebound. Yeah, see, again, that's kind of an ill-advised shot for DB. Of course, you know he can make it, but I like to see him move the ball around a little bit more. Pressure in the backcourt, and now the Saluki fans want to carry. They're not getting it. Inside to Grimes, outside to Milliner, inside to Grimes. He's double teamed out to Lindemann. Lindemann thought about a three, moved around uh, Turner, puts up an easier two, no good. Darren gets the rebound and charges. Darren lowered his shoulder right into a standing uh, Lamar Owen. And that'll be Darren's third personal foul. Third foul on Brody First Darren. personal foul. First personal foul. It's first personal foul. It's Dabbert who's got the other fouls. <laughs> but Dabbert checks in on that same play, and Darren will take a seat. Darren takes a seat, as you said. Also into the ball game is Quincy Henderson. Brian Turner and Jamal Tatum take it in for SIU. Again, keep a look at the Blue Jays' defense. There's, there's been switching defenses on the dogs all game. They're switching from a full-court press to a zone to a man-to-man. -man. So just, just watch out for that and see how the dogs react to their switching defenses. Part of that is by design. Part of it is they're trying to find something that works. SIU shooting well. 43% in the first, 44% in the first half. Inside to Warren against Dabbert. Now he hits it off to Brooks, who puts it up. Can't and rebounded by Bat Dabbert. And Brooks is called for a foul underneath. He clipped Dabbert. Yeah, DB got up under there. You know he says, wow, you know, give me that again. You know I'll put that one in. So he kind of gets called for the ticky tack frustration foul after the missed shot there. Mathis pushes against Tatum and gets it across the timeline. And we're six. Sitting at 43-32 with 16 minutes left. Creighton's making a little bit of a run here in the second half. Miller drives, almost loses control, kicks it out, and now it's Mathis at the top. He pulls up from inside the line, no, and it's going to be rebounded by Milliner, who gets it off to Mathis again. Guarded by Tatum, SIU, in that tough man-to-man -to -man pressure defense. Henderson has it and thinks about driving, pulls back. And now it's knocked away by Tatum, and Jamal Tatum's all alone. Here goes 6-1, and it's blocked from behind. Nice job by Grimes catching up with it. Scrum on the bottom, and it's going to be called. A timeout's going to be called by Jamal Tatum. He corralled the basketball. And with 16.04 left, it's 43-32 SIU. Yeah, that's the one thing you won't see from Tatum usually. Tatum's usually going full speed. He kind of slowed himself down there. Thought he had the easy one. Got caught slipping there, uh, and Grimes came with an easy block. Here goes the replay. Yeah, you, you called it right. He slowed up a little bit to try and finesse the layup a little, and uh, it was blocked from behind on a good catch-up job by Mike Grimes. Yeah, but the good hustle by Tatum, and he keeps the dogs with the ball. I'm sure Coach Painter will straighten him out and get him coming back after they come out of the timeout. 
At this point, we've got the dogs up 43-32, 16 minutes left in the second half. It's a huge crowd. Creighton has not beaten SIU. We'll see this crowd. Right there we are, the dog pound, kind of waiting for the action to start again. They sit down during the timeouts. Yeah. They stand up the rest of the time, and the sellout crowd does not necessarily follow suit, but you see a lot of maroon in the stands. Yeah, I don't know, maybe the crowd's coming off a little bit of a high the other night with the bracket buster game. I mean, the crowd was up for that game. So I don't know, they've kind of been in it, kind of been out of it in this game. Maybe the dog's performance has kind of taken Creighton out of it, and thus has kind of taken the crowd out of it. They're not really as in it as much as you would think they would be for the dog. And they look a little bit worried. This was a 15-point game at halftime. Creighton's gone on a little 7-3 run. And Matt Painter with the timeout right now to try and stem that tide and also maintain possession. Creighton is 15 and 106 all time against ranked opponents. But Dana Altman's 4 and 8, which is a pretty good ratio when you consider the other ratio. That means that 11 and 98 were all the other Creighton coaches against ranked teams. And the Blue Jays have not beaten a ranked team on the road since January 28th of 1978. I don't know about you, Brandon Moore, but that was before I was born. Yeah. Well, if you want to talk about winning coaches, talk about first-year coach Matt Painter. Among Division I coaches, Coach Painter is only second to Pittsburgh's Jamie Dixon, who has a record of 24-2, and two, and Coach Painter's right behind him. So, talking about two good coaches in this matchup here. SIU inbounds it. Tatum tries for the alley-oop to Tony Young. That was the wrong person to get the alley-oop, but Young gets the rebound. Yeah, I think he stepped on the end line and came down with the rebound there. He did, and that means we have a timeout. 43-32, your score, 16 minutes to play. The 16th ranked Salukis with the lead. We'll be back to the arena. Support for this program comes from Mark Williams Outdoor Equipment. Sales and service with name brands like Echo, Mantis, Simplicity, Holland Grills, and more in Murfreesboro on Highway 127. Support for this program comes from your area rude reliable dealers, Brian's Heating and Air Conditioning, Daniel and Son Mechanical Contractor, and Garavaglia Heating and Cooling. Sales and service of heating equipment for residential and commercial use. Rude, a legend in reliability. Support for this program comes from Gentry Couch Incorporated, business insurance and risk management specialists serving the region from their offices in Carterville, Illinois. 1-800-455-4886. Support for this program comes from your area Anheuser-Busch distributors, Benigoni Horrell Distributing LLC, Golden Eagle Distributing, and B&G Vigoni Distributing, reminding you to drink responsibly and remember that together we can all make a difference. Five, four, Support for Saluki basketball comes from First Cellular. A Southern Illinois company specializing in wireless data communication services throughout the communities of Southern Illinois. It's First Cellular, proud to be a continued supporter of SIU Saluki Athletics. It's a winning night here at the SIU Arena. We saw someone win a couch earlier. We just saw someone win $100. Yep. And Brandon Thompson with another winner over on the sidelines. Brandon? Absolutely right. Joined by the commissioner of the Missouri Valley Conference, Doug Elgin. And Mr. Elgin, first off, uh, what a year in the Valley. SIU picked the finish fifth. Now they're in first place. What do you think it says about the league as a whole? Well, I, I think it's an historic run that SIU is on. Tremendous atmosphere in here, in here tonight. And I can't say enough about your student section, Brandon. They are, that is a classy crowd. They've generated, they've harnessed their energy in a positive way for this basketball team, and it's paid dividends. I'll pass on the regards from the commission. Uh, commissioner, I guess the question now is, should one of these teams on the floor not win the Missouri Valley Tournament, how many teams do you think should be in the NCAAs from the Valley? Well, I, I don't think there's any doubt that Southern Illinois has a profile, Brandon. They, I believe they've done enough right now to be in the tournament. They want to be playing their best basketball as they enter the, the Missouri Valley and the NCAA tournament. But that's a, that's a team that I think can go deep into the NCAA tournament. All right, Commissioner, thank you. Enjoy the game. Enjoy the atmosphere here at SIU. Guys, back down to you. We got a foul on Kellen. Uh, Kellen Milliner was fouled. The foul is going to be on Tony Young, who uh, had a basket on the other end while they were talking to the commissioner. And has Southern done enough to get an at-large bid? I don't think Matt Painter cares, do you? <laughs> no, you know, Coach Painter is win, 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 baby. We don't think we've got anything. He wants them just to go out and execute. Well, Creighton, play play. 
as Milliner misses the first one. Creighton looked early like the uh, like it would be a definite at-large candidate. As you pointed out earlier, 10-0 to start the season, and then the wheels came off when McKinney uh, got hurt with that mysterious eye problem, which he still is being treated for. Did not travel with the team here to Carbondale. Milliner misses the second shot, and Josh Warren gets the rebound, and they're going to give him another shot. Someone stepped in the lane too early. Lane violation there. Something else the commissioner mentioned that I think it's important to touch on. He said it's a classic crowd. It's also been a Class E crowd. SIU's uh, staff has been worried at times about the SIU crowd, but both at the Hawaii game earlier and tonight, this crowd has been nothing but class. I think they're just showing what type of university they are. The coach Painter has put out a message that he, you know, he wants the student section to act like we're champions out here. They're calling Owen for the charge. Brody Darren stepped in front and Owen tried to go over him. Owen thought maybe he'd draw the blocking foul, but it did not happen. Darren's very good at setting his feet. That's years of experience. Yeah, that's the third foul on Lamar there. That, that's the kind of stuff you get with Lamar. You know, he's so aggressive that he tends to get out of control sometimes. So he picks up the offensive foul there, and Coach Painter sits him down. I'm sure he'll have a few words for him, get him back in. Very not too aggressive. Long from now. If you ask Lamar Owen what his role on this team is, he'll just say, hey, I'm part of a team. He's also very, he shares the ball, and when he gets a dunk or when he leaves the team in scoring or hits a rebound or two, he's very, uh, very humble about it. Nate Funk, quick up and down. Yeah, I don't know if you guys out there saw that, but that was a great backdoor cut by Nate Funk. Got himself an easy jumper. Tatum is bumped alongside the Creighton bench. The Creighton assistants were hoping he stepped out of bounds first. That did not happen. First foul on Nate Funk, who just hit that shot. You know, he had he had four points early, four of the first eight, and only four points since two of those have come from the line. Yeah. Corn trying to get it in, cannot. Dane Alman wants to know where the five-second call was. Tony Young dribbling it up, pushing Funk. He stops, and he goes to the hoop, and no good. Rebounded by Funk. Yeah, kind of an early shot there by Young. He comes up short on the layup. Funk with the rebound. And Tatum tried to knock it away, and that ball is fouled. And Creighton's getting a little pumped up. It's now a 10-point game, and Brian Turner about to check back in for Southern. Yeah, Coach Painter decides to bring in some senior leadership, bring Turner back in the game, settle the dogs down. Tony Young picks up a foul or two as he plays, and Lamar Owen and Brian, and Brian Turner are going to come in for the Salukis. Yeah, and just like I said, Coach Painter might have a couple words with Owen, and he would get him right back in the game. Yeah, Owen. Young has three fouls on the game tonight. He's fouled out of two games already this year. Milliner in the back shoots the three and drains it, and that's the first three from Creighton. It comes at the 14-17 mark, and it's a seven-point game. Yeah, that was a great shot there by Milliner. He stepped right into it and drained the three ball there. Hairston driving, puts up the shot, counted in the foul. You want to talk about negating the three ball? Stetson Harrison comes right back down, puts in the tough layup with the left hand, and he gets a chance to go to the free throw line, get himself three. Replay here, Stetson. Stetson drives to the lane, and he was hacked as he put the shot up. Got a friendly SIU arena roll for him. See it from another angle. And that was actually with the right hand there, Rick. Was that with the left hand? That was with the right there. Yeah. Stetson is a great finisher for the dogs on the basket. Harrison is a left-handed shooter. I just kind of assumed. That's the second one you've caught me on, Brandon. Do it more often, because I'm sure I'm making more mistakes than that. Into the corner now is Creighton. And Milliner has it to the top to Mathis. He drives around the SIU defense, kicks it to Lindemann, who penetrates, pops out. Three from Milliner. Down it. That's back to back that threes one. for Milner, and he's stepping into those jump shots and draining them. Those are perfect looking jump shots for Milner right there. It was 40 to 35, 40 to 25, excuse me, at the half. It's now a 16 to 8 run by Creighton. They've cut this lead to seven points, 48 to 41, and they found their stroke from behind the three point line. Plus, the Blue Jays are able to actually get open for those three point shots. Here goes the three ball here. As you can see, Milner sets up, gets the good knee bend, gets the good follow through, and like I said, he drains that three ball there. I'm sure Coach Painter is letting him know, look guys, we gotta get out there on these guys. I would not think that SIU could believe it was up by 15 at halftime. I don't think this crowd knew that we could believe it was up at 15 at halftime. Yeah. That was so one perhaps thing I was that's saying, playing on the Salukis' minds, yeah. Yeah, one thing I was saying coming out of the half, the dogs, they want to play their game. They don't want to get complacent. They don't want to let the Blue Jays get back into this one. Because like I said, there's a lot of time to play. And by no means, this game is not over. 
Brad Korn will inbound it for Southern. 48 41, 13 43 to play. Full court pressure again by the Blue Jays. Korn has it, and he'll get it across the line by passing over to Hairston. The Jays are going to press Southern as much as they can. SIU a little faster, but Creighton's been catching up lately, and we have a foul away from the ball on Anthony Tolliver. Foul on the play. Foul on 44. Holding on Sly Willis down there. Sly trying to get a little position, and Tolliver was holding on to him. He's some extra inside presence, and just a freshman, redshirt freshman, he'll be some uh, something to deal with in the future in the Valley. Sly, turn around, up, no good, and knocked away to Creighton. Milliner leading a three-on-two break. Now it's a two-on-two break. Over to Funk, pulls up three, and then and Nate Funk's got the other three. Funk, Mathis, Milliner, all with consecutive threes. And SIU's crowd needs to get in this ball game for the Salukis, and there it is. right back down. The easy layup. Southern needed to answer. It did. It's a six point game, 50 to 44. And the crowd is coming alive with chance of SIU, 50 to 44, with 12 and a half left to play in the second half. We've got a contest here, Rick. We do have a contest. It was 15 and a half time. Darren drives on Corn, puts it up and in. Corn tried to take the charge, but the referees were having none of that. Yeah, and that was good body control by the big man, Darren. He goes, sees the contact, and kind of pulls up for the easy soft off the glass jumper. 21 to 10 Creighton has outscored Southern in the first eight minutes of this half. Corn has it over to Brian Turner. Turner stops has it knocked away but gets it back against Lamaro and he'll reset. Darren Brooks waiting to check in for SIU. Hairston drives throws it up off the glass and a foul. Foul is going to be on Darren. That's his second. Yeah. That's a good aggressive move by Stetson. He's, he has it up top. As you can see on the replay here, he goes straight to the hoop, looking for some contact, looking for the hoop, and almost gets the scoop to go in. He'll go to the free throw line. A hoop and a scoop. Harrison readying at the line. And it's down. He hits the first. The Creighton Subway stops at the scorer's table. Three Blue Jays in. Henderson, Grimes, Dabbert, and Darren Brooks for SIU. And Hairston with a second shot at the stripe. And you've got the student section absolutely quiet for Stetson on the free throw. 52 to 46. Creighton had missed its first two from behind the line. It's now three of six in this ballgame. The last three have come in a row. Funk drives up and nails it. He's a good shooting guard when he gets his uh, hands moving. Yeah, Funk is kind of getting in his rhythm. Harrison tried to go a little too quick, pulls out. Yeah, he was effective early on, then disappeared, and now you can see he's back into the game. Well, that's how you didn't let him do much, and they're getting open shots. Are the Blue Jays now? Nice halftime adjustments by Dana Altman. Harrison stops, pulls it up with the left hand this time, no good. Rebounded by Dabbert. Knocked away to Darren Brooks. Can he hold on to it? He does. Harrison hands it back to Turner. Three from Brian. No good. Rebounded by Sly. Rebounded to, by, to Darren Brooks. And there's a foul on the play. Hustle, hustle, hustle. <laughs> Fouls on Kellen Milliner. Yeah, that's a great hustle there by the dogs. And Creighton, which only had six personal fouls in the first half, has seven here in the second. As that one's Milliner's first. And here goes the replay. They're going up. DB trying to grab the rebound. Security's fouled there by Milliner. And just kind of fell into him, as you'll see. Tapped it away and then hacked him on the way down. SIU in the bonus, shooting one and one. Salukis did not get many free throws in the first half. Darren not necessarily the best free throw shooter on the SIU team. And he misses that one, but Korn's there to grab the rebound. He's to Turner, and Turner drives, dishes off to Brooks, and he's fouled. What a vision by Brian Turner to see open Darren Brooks. Yeah, and that's what a true point guard does. He finds the opening and finds his main man, D.B. D.B. missed the first free throw, but he gets another shot at him. Now the stats are reflected to say he's shooting one for one, and he misses the second one. Excuse me, 0 for 2 now is Darren Brooks. 
And as strong as DB is, he does struggle from the free throw line. Something that he's going to want to secure going into the MVC tournament and moving on into the NCAAs because every point is going to count as we move further into March Madness. He makes the second. We have a timeout. Darren, a 61% free throw shooter heading into the game. Makes one basically of three. 53-48 is the score. The 16th ranked SIU Salukis leading Creighton from the SIU Arena. 11.20 to play. We'll be back for the rest of it soon. Support for this program comes from Banterra Bank, a locally owned financial institution with branches and ATMs throughout Southern Illinois and Western Kentucky. Offering traditional and electronic banking, insurance and investment services. www.banterrabank.com for more information. Banterra Bank, banking with local style. Member FDIC. Support for this program comes from SI Family Dentistry and Dr. Douglas J. Baker, DDS, Cosmetic and General Dentistry. Dental care for adults and children, 108 North 14th Street in Murfreesboro, 684-6461. The Southern and Central Illinois Laborers District Council is proud to support Saluki basketball on WSIU Public Television. Support is provided by the Southern and Central Illinois Laborers and their signatory contractors. Laborers and contractors working together to build Southern and Central Illinois. SIU 53, Creighton 48 with 11.20 to play in the ballgame. Support for this program comes from the SIU Alumni Association. It invites Saluki fans to show their support at the Missouri Valley Conference Basketball Tournament March 5th through 8th at the Savage Center in St. Louis. 453-2408, 453-2408 for information about alumni, pregame, and halftime activities. 53 to 48 is the score, and Darren Brooks is a large part of that, isn't he, Brandon? Absolutely right, Rick. A large part of everything SIU has been able to accomplish in the last couple of years. And you know, it's a huge year for Darren. A landmark night, very possibly tonight. Darren needs just 13 points to pass a current Minnesota Timberwolf Troy Hudson as the 21st leading scorer in the history of Southern Illinois University. Again, Darren needs just 13 points. He's right now at 1,151. So uh, 13 more points, and DB caught Troy Hudson here in uh, SIU history, guys. He's got eight tonight, but SIU only leads the ball game by five. Darren has hit in double figures in 29 straight games. Nate Funk drives and around the side is cut off by Willis. Back off to Mathis. Lucky fans want to travel. Mathis stops, pops, and misses it short. Rebounded by Darren, and he hits it. That was almost a, a designed play. <laughs> Mathis with the missed shot. The Brody Darren on the cleanup crew with the easy deuce drops it in. This was a 15-point game. At halftime, it's a three-point game now, and SIU reeling a little bit. Yeah, the dogs are going to have to reassert themselves and get back into what got them the lead early on. Defense is going to have to start it for the dog. Defense and rebounding. Brooks has it, drives around to the side, and now he tries to penetrate. Does, puts it up, and it will not fall. Rebounded by Henderson, knocked away to Tony Young. Back to Darren, up and in. There's the thief, Tony Young. That's it, Darren Brooks, 30 straight games and double figures for the Salukis. Yeah, That's he, impressive. And he closes in on that number that our man Brandon Thompson was talking about on the sideline. SIU crowd getting loud for Southern's defense. It's a five-point game. And Nate Funk has it in the corner. He's been dead on tonight. Funk off the screen by Grimes. Pulls up. Puts up the three with Turner in his face. Misses it. Turner gets the rebound. And maybe a little bit of a forced shot there by Funk. I know he's kind of feeling it. And he, I don't know if Altman, if that was a shot that Altman was looking for out of Funk on that position. 55-50. Corn with it on the elbow. He drives. He puts one up and puts it in. And Brad Corn showing a bit of athleticism. Yeah, great shot there by BK. Again, he's proving the point. He must have heard of me talking with. He's getting to the basket tonight. Tony Young hounding Johnny Mathis. He gets it over to Funk and it's back to Mathis. And Dana Altman needs a timeout. 57 to 50 is the score. 30 second timeout on the court for Dana Altman and crew. Yeah, so the a little bit of a replay here. Tony Young with the steal. Finds DB for the easy one. 
That's the first one. And then here on the other side, Brad Korn penetrating and over Grimes. And Brody Darren was kind of caught by surprise there. At least it sure looked like it to me. Did not expect Korn to go up with it or maybe thought he'd walk beforehand. Either way, it was two more points for SIU. And this was a three-point game. Southern quickly makes it a four-point game. Earlier this year, broadcasters for one of SIU's opponents called some of Southern's baskets that it gets off of the defensive side. Um, trash baskets, if you will. They call them yeah, baskets that junk, uh, junk baskets. I brought that up with Matt Painter earlier this year, and he said they go in, don't they? And he's got a point. SIU, that was another example of following through, getting the steal, getting a basket off of it. And you can hear the dog pal going crazy in the arena. I can barely hear myself think, which may not be a bad thing. Funk with the ball over to Lindemann. Nine minutes to play in the ball game. Southern by seven. Yeah, look for the fans. Gabbard really throws it away to Darren Brooks. Brooks up ahead. He's got Tony Young. Young bounces one and has it knocked out of his hands and out of bounds. And that'll quiet the crowd for a little bit. Gotta quiet him. Again, the defensive pressure and intensity of the dogs is creating offense for them. Shutting down the Blue Jays. They get fouled there by Tony Young, but create an easy one. It is a rare team that can run with Southern and catch up from behind, but that's what Creighton has done tonight. SIU has forced 17 turnovers in this ball game. Yeah, right at their season's mark there, Rick. Only committed nine. Turner with the ball, working on Funk, and he gives it off to Brad Korn. SIU going to run some clock here, take its time. Matt Painter barking out the play. Turner gives it to Korn, to Young, and back to Sylvester Willis. Willis Martin. decides to drive, and he gets it knocked out of his hands, loses control. It's off Sly, and the referees go the other way. Sly kind of lost control of it before anybody could have knocked it out of his hands. Yeah, he saw a little opening there, and then the opening closed up on him, and he kind of lost the ball there. That's not really Sly's place out there on the dribble anyway, so look for him to be down the blocks next time he gets it. It's 57-50, to 50. SIU leading Creighton. Milliner with a quick three, and it's no good. Rebounded by Michael Lindemann, who got up and got it and missed the layup. Lindemann missed the layup. Ball's knocked out of bounds. It will be long to Creighton. Yeah, well, Lindemann hasn't had much daylight tonight, so I guess he got up under the basket and was kind of in a hurry to get that shot up and missed the easy one. The Valley's most tenured coach versus the Valley's youngest coach in this matchup. Least tenured coach. Both doing excellent jobs with their programs. Inside to Funk, back to Brody Darren. Creighton now taking its time. This is to Funk. Trapped in the corner by Tony Young, knocks it out of his hands. Yeah, and on the dead ball, Coach Painter sending in his reserves. And we have a media timeout. 57 to 50 is the score. SIU a seven point lead over Creighton Blue Jays. One and two in the Missouri Valley. 7.45 to play, 57-50, back to the arena in a minute. Support for this program comes from your area Anheuser-Busch distributors, Benigoni Horrell Distributing LLC, Golden Eagle Distributing, and B&G Vigoni Distributing, reminding you to drink responsibly and remember that together we can all make a difference. Support for this program comes from Gentry Couch Incorporated, business insurance and risk management specialists serving the region from their offices in Carterville, Illinois, 1-800-455-4886. Support for this program comes from Mark Williams Outdoor Equipment. Sales and service with name brands like Echo, Mantis, Simplicity, Holland Grills, and more in Murfreesboro on Highway. As a little tweaking to the formula, but still SIU definitely doing well, and it won't affect their ranking more than a couple of points. Hey, Rick, Brandon out there on the sideline, he's got his stuff down. He does. Right? He, he knows, knows his numbers, doesn't he? <laughs> Nate Funk with it for Creighton, 57-50. The Blue Jays trail it. And Funk thought about taking another three, but Darren Brooks recovered very well. Now Milliner drives the lane, puts it up over Warren, no good. Darren comes in and gets the rebound. It's no good, and Josh Warren shows up to grab the rebound. Yeah, that's, that's, that's good, good rebounding there by Josh Warren. Big body goes down there, fights with the big guys, and comes up with the rebound. Brad Korn inside it to Josh Warren, no good, and it's knocked away by, actually, Harrison just plain lost the control Harrison, of the ball, Harrison and Creighton recovered. Harrison. Well, Stetson Harrison can turn the ball over, but he's doing so much better at that this season than he did last year. As we come, uh, the dogs are up 57 and 50 with just under seven minutes to play. Just to make a note, Creighton has not lost back-to-back -back games since December of 2001. 
coming off getting their bracket busted over the weekend by Kent State. Nate Funk doesn't want to lose. He puts it in. It's now 57 to 52. Creighton will not go away against the Southern Illinois team. The only other school in the last three years to sweep a season from these Creighton Blue Jays, sweep a season series, was the Salukis two seasons ago. Brooks drives up, bad shot. And two players are on the ground, Brooks and Nate Funk. As yeah. Brody Darren came away with it off the glass. Yeah, aggressive move there by DB, kind of got in there with the trees and kind of got lost as he went towards the basket. Funk guarded tight by Brooks, hands it over to a wide open Kellen Milliner. Someone missed him, and he missed the shot. Well, that's, that's definitely a foul there on Brody Darren. That's who they're going to call it on. It's Darren's third personal foul. They've all come in this second half of play, and that's the ninth team foul on Creighton. Yeah, here goes the replay. BK goes up to grab it. Brody Darren just all over the back sends BK to the free throw line. Brad Korn heading the line. He's two of four on the night. He's gone one and one both of his trips. The line. Yeah, BK just named to the all-improved team for the MVC. <laughs> Few players on this uh, on this floor getting awarded by the Valley earlier today. As you mentioned, Korn on the all-improved team. Owen and Tatum for SIU also on the all-bench team. Yeah, not a bad season for the dogs. You're looking no. at maybe the Valley Player of the Year, <laughs> a couple guys on the bench team, most improved, maybe the Coach of the Year, MVC title. Pretty sweet season for I'll the I'll tell dogs. you, that MVC title part is the one Southern really wanted to have. Three in a row for the Salukis. 59-52 after Korn makes the two free throws. Mathis almost loses the ball at half court, comes around to Lindemann. Lindemann off a screen from Dabbert, now tries to get it back to him and cannot. But he recovers his mistake. Hairston knocked that ball away. Over to Dabbert, it's out of bounds, and the ball will belong to the Blue Jays. Well, in these last five minutes, Rick, I look for the dogs to pick up the defensive intensity. One thing about the dogs, they tend to just wear on their opponents. After a while, opponents can't deal with the constant pressure and the constant rotation of Coach Painter and the many players that he throws at them. So I just look for the dogs to wear on the Blue Jays here in these last five minutes. Math, uh, Creighton may be the second deepest team in the conference as Dabbert charges. Lamar Owen was standing there. He got run over like he was hit by a Mack truck. And Southern gets the ball back on the 10th foul of the half by Creighton. Yeah, you can see a little bit of frustration setting in on the face of the Blue Jay players. Kind of feeling like they're in the game, but they're still not there. They're still down seven points. And well, the way they've played the second half, they shouldn't be down seven points. They've played very well. Brooks having trouble getting it in, throws it long to Hairston. He's going to run. And now it's caught up, and Hudson will calm down. Gives it off to Jamal Tatum. Five and a half minutes to play. 59-52, SIU with the lead. No team has gone 16-0 in the Missouri Valley Conference since Hersey Hawkins led Bradley in the 1985-86 season. No team has ever gone 18-0. Hairston drives baseline, no good. Shots up, fought four, rebounded by Henderson, and Creighton brings it away. Yeah, nice aggressive move there by Hairston. Looked like he got a little bit of a body foul, but it was a no call, and he got to play through him. Cross-court pass to Milliner, who creates a shot, misses it, though, and it's rebounded by SIU, and Brooks is going to slow things down. Yeah, DB grabs the rebound, slow it down for the dogs. You can tell when Southern needs a breather. It always knows it needs that breather and will slow things up. It conserves energy on the defensive end. Tatum has it on top. He gets a screen from Warren, pulls up, and misses the shot. Big time rebound Grimes there grabbed the Grimes. rebound. It's knocked away, and Hairston tries to save it, but can't step down the line. And the ball belonged to Creighton. Mike Grimes did not do much in that first half of play, but he's really come on strong here in the second. Grimes with now with three rebounds now on the night, including two putbacks. He didn't have any in the first half. Yeah. Two Coach, Creighton players in double figures. Yeah, Coach Painter brings in Brian Turner in there for Jamal Tatum. Nate Funk with 15, Brody Darren with 12. They lead the Blue Jays who have not gotten much production from their guards outside of Nate Funk's 15. Tolliver with it at the top of the key. Dribbles around. Warren gave him a little bit of room. And now penetration. Shot up from Milliner. He drains it. And the foul. Someone lost a shoe. You can see it there on the court. Yeah, that, 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 
that's a great shot there by Milner. Not too much DB can do about that on defense. Sometimes the offense is just better than the defense, and Milner drives it on DB here. You can check out the replay. He just goes straight up, gets a little contact, and bounces the soft roll in, and he'll go to the free throw line, trying to add to his point total for the evening. That's the first field goal Milner's had tonight that came inside the three-point arc. He's taken a lot of shots, three of nine on the game, but two of five from inside the arc. Milliner gets one shot to try and make it a four point game. 59 54 the current score. 59 55 the score now. Yeah, Milner hits for 10 points, and that's right at his season's average. The stats don't lie, Rick. Inbound to Warren, he's doubled up, and he gets it away to, um, to Lamar Owen. Owen and Hairston, two on two on one. Now they hope pull back. They pull back because Creighton caught up. Now inside to Owen, who goes over player. It's a blocking foul. Count the basket for Lamar Owen. Right over. Of Creighton. And Owen's limping a little bit coming out of that, and he's going to want some time. Yeah. Mr. Soccer, Lamar Owen, is not afraid of the contact. Replay here, he goes straight up, gets the contact, throws it in off the glass. Buckets for Lamar Owen. He's headed to the free throw line. You can see it on his face. Owen's not going to be in the game for much longer. I think he's going to take a less and let him look at his ankle, and I think he turned there. Owen misses the free throw, though. He's going to have to stay in for a little bit. Darren gets the rebound. 3.47 to play. 61.55 is the score. Lamar Owen leads SIU in points. Yeah, and I look to see Coach Dana Altman get Nate Funk back in the game for these last three minutes of the contest. Foul off the ball on Sylvester Willis. That's his third. He picked up two very early and had not picked one up since then, although he had played in that first half with the two fouls. So we talked about it earlier in the game, that veteran ability to play while you're in foul trouble and not pick up a third. Darren hits the free throw. Yeah, Brody Darren's having a solid game for Coach Dana Altman. 61-56 the score. Darren will try and make it 61-57 and send us to a timeout. Readies shoots it and is way short and the rebound comes away to Turner almost looked as though Darren was hoping to get his own rebound. Brian Turner will slowly bring it up the court for Southern and now he breaks into a second gear. Willis has it on the elbow. As the clock ticks away SIU content to run some clock as long as the Salukis can make a shot or two. This was a 15 point halftime game. It's a 10 a five point game now. Hairston drives, stops, kicks it out to Owen, who's open in the corner, misses it long. And the rebound's chased down by Brody Darren. Another board for Darren. Yeah, looked like Owen had a little bit too much energy on that shot, threw it all the way over the basket. Grimes inside, puts it up over Sylvester Willis. Grimes has seven points, and it's a three-point game again. It hasn't been that way since about the 10-minute mark. Yeah, and the fans stand up, and I look for Coach Painter. Let me call it T.O. here. Well, he's, gonna, he's trying to avoid one, but he can't. And Matt Painter will call a short timeout. Yeah, it's a 30. Nothing wrong with that timeout there. You bring you guys into the huddle, get them settled down, maybe draw up a play for them, say, look, guys, we've got two minutes, 42 seconds left to play in the game. We're up by three. Three-point lead is nothing in this type of game, as you can see by uh, Creighton's three-point shooting here in the second half. But he gets a chance to settle him down, maybe draw up something for him. Correction, Southern calls for a full timeout. Let's listen in to see if we can hear what Matt Painter's saying. Darren for the game has 13 points and 13 rebounds and here we see the last two points scored by Southern I'm sorry by Mike Grimes of Creighton Grimes those are his ninth points of the game eight the ninth points of the game he has nine and two three players from each team in double figures Lamar Owen leads SIU with 12 Darren Brooks with 11 and Stetson Harrison has 10 Brad Corn not far behind with nine. So at this point in the game, Rick, like I was saying, two minutes, two minutes, 42 seconds left. It's a match of wills now, you know what I mean? It, it comes down to who wants it more at this point. You can tell that the Blue Jays are hungry and they want it, and the Dogs have to reassert themselves and just kind of finish this game off with the cap on it. Two teams in the history of Valley play have gone 16-0. Bradley in 85-86. 
Indiana State when they had a guy named Bird in 78 and 79. SIU trying to become the third. Now they're two and a half minutes away, but <laughs> not, only a three-point cushion. Yeah, not to mention SIU has won 25 conference home games. So somebody's streak is going to end here tonight. Turner has it and throws it away. Brad Korn looking for a foul. He did not get it. And we come to the final media timeout in regulation. 61 to 58 is the score. 16th ranked SIU with the lead over Creighton. Don't go anywhere. We've got a finish coming up. Support for this program comes from Vogler Ford, your regional Ford Lincoln Mercury Mazda dealer, Saluki Wheels Club member, and proud again to team with WSIU to bring you Saluki basketball in Carbondale and Route 13 East across from University Mall. Support for this program comes from SI Family Dentistry and Dr. Douglas J. Baker, DDS, Cosmetic and General Dentistry. Dental care for adults and children, 108. For 16 SIU, 61, Creighton, 58 from the SIU Arena, two and a half minutes to play. Support for Saluki Basketball brought to you in part by First Cellular, a Southern Illinois company specializing in wireless data communication services throughout the communities of Southern Illinois. First Cellular, proud to be a continued supporter of SIU, and of Saluki Athletics. Matt Painter's lead has been cut by 12 points. Brandon Thompson, what's he thinking? Yeah, Matt Painter's lead absolutely shredded, Rick. And in the timeout, Painter not, not energized and not, not nervous at all. This is not his style. He tells the guys basically how to play D back down on Brody Darren and offensively look for Sly Willis to come out, set a post for Bro set a post on Brody Darren rather, and Darren Brooks will get the ball. He then told Darren to take it directly to the hoop. So look for Darren to catch the ball out near the top of the key, take it directly to the rack, and get some SIU points. We'll see what happens and if that works out as scripted, guys. If only it did work out as scripted, huh? It is an official sellout at the arena. They've announced the verified number, 9,628. It's the second straight sellout for SIU. That hasn't happened in a long time, since the early 90s. Creighton has the basketball, 61-58 the score. And with all these fans here, they don't want to see an SIU loss. The dogs don't want to disappoint them. Darren guarded by Sylvester Willis. They're trying not to let him back down. He backs down a little bit, puts it up, and misses it. And Sylvester Willis is in place to get the rebound, but it's knocked into the hands of Mr. Reliable, Darren Brooks. Yeah, that's a great stand-up defensive play there by Sly Willis. Brody Darren called for the, for the isolation, and Sly just played defense on him, and Brody missed the uh, jump hook there. Brooks has the ball. We'll see if he takes it to the hoop. He does, and it's blocked from behind by Darren. Darren blocked by Darren, and SIU will retain the basketball. 17 on the shot clock, 144 on the game. 61-58, our score, 16th-ranked SIU fighting against the Creighton Blue Jays. Yeah, and all year, SIU has come up with the big hoops at this time in the game. They come up with a big shot, big layup, big steal. Let's see if they do it here tonight. Brooks pulls up, fires it, and drains it in. That's what you're looking for, isn't it, Brandon Hall? That's right on key there, Rick Gregg. Big-time shot by DB, kind of like what he did the other night against the Rainbows of Hawaii. And now a steal the other direction. Funk tried to get it over to Darren, could not corral it, and Stetson Hairston came away with the ball. SIU is going to run clock. 119 to go. Hairston gets it across the line. Just and it's over to my, uh, Brad Korn. Yeah, just like I spoke on. Big time shot by DB, and on the other end, big time steal by Hairston. Brooks has it, and now he's fouled by Nate Funk. And the game will begin, the foul game. SIU already in the double bonus. Creighton in the bonus. SIU has seven fouls. Nate Funk picks up his second. He's Creighton's leading scorer tonight. Yeah, that last sequence really epitomizes the dogs and what they're all about. DB puts it in for him on the offensive end, and then on the defensive end, it's a steal for him. Well, Darren Brooks, only a 61% free throw shooter coming into the ball game. We'll see him drive here. He made the first free throw. He, he pulls it. up that shot from just inside and puts it down. Darren misses the second one. It's rebounded by Grimes. And it's a six-point game. Pushing is Grimes. We have a minute to go. SIU leading by six. Inbounds it to Darren and up and in. Should say inside pass to Darren. That's Dabbert, actually. Darren on the bench. He won't be for long. Hairston has it, gives it to Korn, who gets it to Brooks, and over to Turner. They get it across the timeline. SIU two on one. Turner slows up with a four-point lead, 64 to 60. 
Horn is fouled by Matthews. Great senior leadership and great basketball IQ there by BT. He had the open break with him and slide two on one, but he pulls it out just like a good point guard should do. Sends Brad Corn to the line after he's fouled by the Blue Jays. Brad Corn struggling from the line tonight. Has only made four of six. He's an average 79% free throw shooter. He misses the first. Corn now four of seven. Sorry, yeah, four of seven. Lindemann into the ball game, Grimes out for Creighton. Again, free throw shooting is key for the dogs. They've got to nail these free throws if they want to seal the game. There's one of them from Corn. And he's going to sit as Lamar Owen comes in, and Matt Painter now playing offense for defense. Lamar Owen's got the extra energy to run with anybody on the floor for Creighton. McKinney inbounds it to Mathis. 40 seconds in the game, five point lead from 16th ranked SIU. Nate Funk fakes out Stetson Harrison, pulls up from behind the line. No good, Brian Turner with the rebound. He's fouled right away. And if Brian Turner can make these shots, SIU could be looking at the first 16 0 season in the Valley. Yeah, seems in like a long after, time. After the rebound there, BT came down with the rebound and kind of got a jab there by Milner. They exchanged a few words going up to court. Not quite sure what they're talking Tensions about. Tensions always <laughs> high, though, in the Creighton SIU rivalry, at least the last couple of years. Lots of dog pound fans wearing the I Hate Creighton t shirts that were popular last season. First shot by Turner's up and in. Yeah, but if Brian Turner, if he puts these free throws in, there's not much that Milner can say to him. Turner. 72% free throw shooter. He hits them both. And it is a four, seven point lead, two possession lead for SIU. The shot clock is dead. 27 seconds. And Mathis trips, falls, walks with it, and you can book this game. Well, Brad Corn's going to check in for slide. And they got Tatum checking in. Look at Here the crowd there. shout. NIT. This will be Creighton's fifth loss in the Missouri Valley Conference, barring a miracle. They'll fall to 19 and six on the season, 11 and five in the Valley. Inbound to Tatum. Tatum fought off and oh, fouled by Kellen Milliner. Yeah, and as, as I was saying earlier, Rick, this will be the first time that Creighton has lost back-to-back -back games since they lost to Western Kentucky and Xavier in December of 2001. 2004 season been a while since they've done this so you can tell what kind of program they have the dogs just playing superior ball this evening a strange position too as Tatum hits the first one for Southern Illinois came into this game as the favorite against Creighton and that hasn't happened in a long time and Southern really making the most of it Tatum second shot up no good rebounded by Nate Funk he pushed it the other direction eight point lead for Southern Milliner with a three. It's no good. Well short to, to Darren Brooks, and Brooks is going to be allowed to run it out with 12 seconds to play. He hands it off to Jamal Tatum, up to Brad Corn. Count the seconds down. Four, three, two. SIU is 16-0 in the Missouri Valley Conference with a 68-60 win over the Creighton Blue Jays. Absolutely sweet the season series. And the dogs keep on rolling. 68-60 victory over the Quayton Blue Jays. Well, we wouldn't be surprised if the final matchup between these two teams comes a little later in the year, just a couple of weeks from now at the Missouri Valley Conference Tournament. If we see that if these two teams see each other in the final game, or maybe earlier, if uh, Creighton falls a little bit, or Southern, well, Southern can fall to there since we're short of the number one seed in the tournament. 68-60, the final score of this one. And what a game by SIU. Yeah, so SIU sweeps the regular season matchup between the two teams. I don't know, kind of a psychological edge they may now have over the Blue Jays if they do face them in the tournament. Well, and we can't cut away from, from Creighton. We'll get to that in a second. But right now, the victorious Matt Painter is with our Brandon Thompson. And coach, 10,000 people here in the SIU arena. I don't think there's an unchewed fingernail in the house. Uh, how scary did it get for you down there in the end? Well, they're a very good team, and they're going to make a run. Um, you know, they just have so many weapons, guys that can shoot the basketball. We had about five layups we missed in the first five minutes um, of the second half. It would have been a different game if we could have converted those layups. But they made a heck of a run, and they're a very 
good team, and uh, we're lucky to beat them twice this year. And uh, I'm just happy for our guys. They kept battling. They kept their poise. You guys now perfect 16 and 0 in the Valley, right up there with Indiana State, the great Indiana Larry Bird team uh, with the the Bradleys of the MVC. How good do you think this team is, and where do you think it ranks in those great Missouri Valley Conference teams? Well, it's tough to, to say because you're comparing different eras in the mid 80s and the late 70s. Um, we have a very good team. We got a lot of character on this team, guys that'll play very hard and, and care for each other. So I really don't know to you know how to compare those teams. They have two legends on their teams in the NBA. We have some very good players. Um, very good college players that have done a great job for us, and we're just hoping to keep this thing going. Finally, Coach, what a win streak. The MVC all wrapped up. Is the NCAA tourney kind of vibe and, and, and that feeling kind of getting into you now as a first-year coach? Yeah, you know, as we win, you know, more games in each game, we're getting an inch closer to the NCAA tournament, and that's one of our goals. We've accomplished one of our goals of winning uh, the regular season title. Now we're trying to get that next goal um, of winning the tournament so we don't have to worry about an at-large bid. But we still have two regular season games to go and uh, Saturday night with senior night with Bradley is going to be a this is a great night for our three seniors that meant so much to this program and uh, I'm just happy for those guys and hopefully we can keep accomplishing our goals. All right, coach, congratulations guys in Northern Iowa and Bradley left on the SIU agenda we'll see if we can wipe them out and complete the perfect run in the MVC back down to you. First here Bradley first here at the SIU arena the support for Saluki basketball comes from Vogler Motor Company from Mark Williams Outdoor Equipment, from Banterra Bank, Venegoni Horrell Distributing LLC, Golden Eagle Distributing, and B&G Venegoni Distributing, 710 Bookstore and the Saluki Connection, SI Family Dentistry, Gentry Couch Incorporated, Ryan's Heating and Air Conditioning, Daniel and Son Mechanical Contractors, and Garavaglia Heating and Cooling, and by the Southern and Central Illinois Laborers District Council. 68 to 60, the final score of this ball game. 16th ranked SIU defends that ranking as the crowd fouls out. The uh, Saluki Dogs certainly excited. SIU now 23 and 2 overall, 16 and 0 in the Missouri Valley Conference. And Brandon Moore, what a win! The Creighton Blue Jays. We're going to check out some stats here. See how the dogs took the victory. Picture time, Gray Dog there. 68-60 the final, Brandon. Yeah, the uh, dogs kind of even there with the Blue Jays in field goal percentage, 43 to 41. Three-point percentage, Creighton had a good second half of three-point shooting, 36% to 30 for the uh, dogs there, and 79% for the Blue Jays from the throw line and 70% for the Salukis. 20 turnovers for the Blue Jays and 12 for the dogs. 20 turnovers for the Blue Jays, but Southern Illinois had forced several of those at halftime. Creighton took much better possession of the ball in the second half. What Nathan Funk leads the uh, Creighton University Blue Jays with 15 points in tonight's ball game. Darren Brooks scored 14 to lead Southern Illinois, but he wasn't far. Uh, Lamar Owen wasn't far, beh far behind with 12 in that game, and both of them played outstanding ball. Yeah, like I was saying, the dogs, they just wear on you. You know, it was a great contest. Creighton made a run late in the second half, got it down. I'm not sure if it got down to three or five at one point. Maybe I think it was three. But the dogs just come up with the big plays, and they've been doing this same thing all year. Defense is their MO. They get steals, creates their offense. And what more can you say about DB on the offensive end? Big time hoops late in the game when his team needs them. That's what being a leader on your team is all about. Brandon mentioned that, Brandon Thompson mentioned that Bradley and Northern Iowa are left on the schedule for SIU in that order. Bradley here at the arena on Saturday, then Northern Iowa on the road may have a chance to ruin a perfect season. That sound familiar, SIU fans? Northern Iowa with a chance to ruin a perfect season. It happened in football, where the uh, football Salukis went to Northern Iowa, had a big first half lead, and then fell in the second by three points. It could be just another field goal here, or SIU could run the tail, but you got to focus on Bradley first. It'll be another packed house at the arena. Yeah. It'll be another great atmosphere for this game against Bradley on Saturday night. Yeah, and that'll be senior night. You get a chance to highlight the seniors that have helped contribute to this year's team, Brian Turner, Brad Korn and Sly Willis all will be highlighted on that evening. And I look for the dogs to come out and execute, play their game. I know Coach Painter will have them up and ready for the game. And from Creighton, if we look at them, the season's not over. They still have the Missouri Valley Conference Tournament, but this game probably put the final nail in the at-large coffin for the Blue Jays. Yeah, like you were saying, NIT maybe for the Blue Jays, and looks like NCAA for the Salukis. We'll see if that's the way it works. We thank you for joining us tonight here on the WSIU television stations or wherever else you might be watching us.
For Brandon Thompson and for Brandon Moore, I'm Rick Gregg. 68-60, the final score tonight. 16th ranked SIU pulls off the victory over Creighton. Hope you'll join us at the arena on Saturday night. There are still tickets available. SIU and Bradley on Saturday. <laughs>